Hi everyone and welcome back. I really miss making DIY school supplies videos, which I've been doing every year since starting YouTube, but this year has obviously been an unfortunate exception. So in this video, I'm going to show you some craft ideas that can help make a day of distance learning less boring. Just because you're at home doesn't mean you can't share some fun DIYs with your friends. First up, we have some baby BT21 pencil toppers. I chose these because they're easily visible, even if you're on a webcam. This method can also be adapted for other characters, so check out this video if you need more inspiration. I'm starting with hearty soft paper clay, and this is a DIY that I would only recommend making with air dry clay. Polymer clay is too heavy, and you also don't want to bake a pen or pencil in the oven. I'm making a light blue color for baby Koya using some acrylic paint, and then making a tiny bit of purple for the nose. Always keep your unused clay inside wet wipes or a damp towel so it stays soft. Now grab a small piece, wrap it around the end of your pencil like this, and set it aside for later. Take some of the remaining clay and sculpt it into a mushroom shape. Use scissors to cut out the legs, and then smooth everything down using lots of water. I find the best way to join paper clay together is to make a clean cut, apply a bit of water, and then press it into place. You can get lots of sharp angles and nice shapes like this. I also recommend using a toothpick to smooth the edges down and just to make sure everything is firmly stuck together. This is where you can notice a real difference between brands of clay. I used a much cheaper brand of clay to make cookie, and I had quite a lot of problems with it, as you'll see later on. For the final step, take your pencil out and cut off one side of the clay like this. Apply some water onto the surface and stick your character into place. In case the clay has started to dry a bit, you can also fill the gap using scrap clay and use lots of water to make sure everything is joined together. Now I'm going to repeat the process to make a cookie. This time I'm using a random paper clay that I ordered from AliExpress. The texture is really fluffy, but it's not ideal for pieces with a lot of detail. Adding water tends to make the surface dissolve, and it creates this weird fuzzy texture which you can see here. It did work out in the end, but I had to work very slowly and very carefully. I painted on the facial features and attached cookies to the pencil. These turn out so cute, and it's one of the few things that you can show on screen during video classes. Making pen toppers from clay gives you a lot more flexibility, and they're much cheaper as well. For instance, you can make a bunch of crewmates and then send them to your friends to use in lessons, or make your favorite emojis and then hold them up as reactions. The possibilities are endless. The next idea is also a very simple but effective way to let your friends know that you're still thinking of them. This is the easiest friendship bracelet to make, and you only need to have embroidery thread in different colors. Cut off quite a long piece, longer than you think you might need, and then tie a knot in one end. Start from one side and always work in the same direction. Take one thread, place it over the next one, and then pull it through the loop to create a knot. Then repeat this again and work your way across the whole row. The most important thing with this method is to hold one thread still, in this case the green one, and only pull on the thread with the color that you want to see, in this case the yellow one. If you pull on both threads at the same time, then you might end up with the other color showing up by accident. The second thing to remember is to always make two knots in a row. This prevents the bracelet from twisting. I realized this by accident when I was filming the first bracelet, and I was really confused why it kept doing this. It's been so long since I made a friendship bracelet that I completely forgot that you have to make two knots. You might also be wondering how long the bracelet should be if you're making it for a friend. The easiest way is just to use your own wrists if both of you are similar in size. Or you can simply make it 14 centimeters plus 2 centimeters of extra thread for extension. 
This was the length I used when I had a jewelry shop many years ago, and I found that it fits almost 90% of all adult customers. Once you have the finished bracelet, you can send it to your friends by post or drop it by their house if you live nearby. Just receiving something handmade from someone who cares about you makes a big difference when you've been stuck at home for so long. The final DIY is not that closely related to school, but it's definitely something you have to do at home. I found this kit on Amazon where you can make your own felted toy using a washing machine. The reviews are quite mixed, ranging from really fun and easy to do to smells like old socks. Since I've spent years making felting tutorials on YouTube, I had to give this a try. First of all, you have to fill a bottle with warm water, then add some soap and then attach the spray nozzle. This started as a fail for me because the spray attachment didn't fit onto my bottle. I'm not sure if it's the brand or maybe it's an American versus European thing, but I decided to skip it and that's completely fine. This DIY is based on wet felting, which is a crafting technique that's more widespread and probably safer to do than needle felting. Instead of a needle, you simply use soapy water to break down the wool fibers and get them to stick to each other. Start by placing the white wool into the nose part, then soak it with water and rub it into place. I made a video many years ago on how to make DIY felted soap, and you can watch that here if you want to know more. The nose and eyes need to be attached very firmly to prevent them from falling out during washing. Then start adding large pieces of wool into all the narrow bits of the mold, making sure they overlap with the head and body. Keep going until you fill up the entire inside with a layer of brown like this. Wet felting is incredibly relaxing to do and great for relieving stress and boredom. If you have felting wool at home, then you can easily wet felt simple shapes like balls or hearts, or use the inside of a bowl as a mold. Next, place these two pom-poms into the head and body and fill everything up with the remaining wool. Then replace the back of the mold and clip everything into place. While I was doing this, I noticed that some of the water coming out was tinted brown. This bothered me a bit, considering it's supposed to go into a washing machine with regular clothing. However, the instructions do specify that it should only be with dark laundry. The final step also came as a bit of a surprise, because you're supposed to wash this twice on a hot cycle, and then dry it once in the tumble dryer. I sort of assumed that this DIY only needs to go into the washing machine once, but this seems like a lot of time and hassle to make a single felted teddy. The mold also needs to be inside a laundry bag, which I didn't have, so I used the pillowcase instead. I originally wanted to wash my yoga pants as well, but because these have a white band on top, I decided not to risk it. So I'm just going to throw it inside with a few towels and do a quick wash for one hour. To be honest, this is getting very complicated now, because if you want to wash this naturally with two loads of dark clothing, then you probably have to wait several days to actually get enough laundry together. I don't feel it's worth running the washer and dryer empty just to make this bare. So I actually ended up washing it just once, because I checked it when it came out and everything was pretty well felted. Then I tossed it into the dryer for one hour. And now for the moment of truth, to see if this DIY actually works. I have to say this bear turned out a lot better than I expected. It doesn't look perfect at all, but it sort of reminds me of a stuffed animal that's been loved so much until it became scruffy. I was most worried about the arms and legs coming off, but they're actually quite well attached to the body. And unlike that one review, this definitely didn't smell like socks. It smells warm and fluffy like the rest of the laundry from the dryer. However, I'm not sure this is very good value for money because I paid $21 for it on Amazon and the materials inside are definitely not worth that much. That listing has actually disappeared by now, so I would only really recommend trying this kit if you can find it cheaper in shops. There's something very lovable about this bear, especially since you have to spend so much time and effort making it yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video and that these DIYs will help you from getting too bored at home. Please check out my TikTok as well, as I'm pretty active on there at the moment. 
I'm Joanna. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.